I remember the first time I drove an electric car back in 2011. I was instantly enamored by the massive torque, silent operation, and eco-friendliness of batteries and motors. But back then, most EVs had a very short driving range and there weren't many places to charge them up. It was really tough to use them as your only car. Today though, electric cars are ready for mainstream consumption. Chevrolet wants in on the action with this, the Bolt EV. It's got a really long driving range, a relatively affordable price, and coupled with everything else that we like about it, this could be the most well-rounded electric car you can buy today. How does it look? I'll admit that it looks a little bit dorky, but there's nothing unattractive about the Bolt's tall hatchback design. In fact, Chevy calls it a crossover owing to the black fender cladding and the tall ride height, but I'm not buying it. Overall, I like the way this car looks, though the floating roof treatment on the C-pillar is starting to feel a little overdone now that almost every other automaker is using it. How's the storage? Cargo space is pretty good overall, at about 17 cubic feet with the back seats up. To put that into perspective, that's midway between the roominess you get in a Chevy Cruze sedan and a Cruze hatchback. Now there's a false floor arrangement here. You can leave it up so that you have a perfectly flat load surface when you fold the back seats down. Or you can lower it if you want more vertical height in the cargo area. Let's see what this trunk looks like when we put our new Away suitcases back here. Inside, there's a really deep center console compartment, a spot to wirelessly charge your phone, two cup holders, and really roomy bottle holders on the doors. What I like most of all, though, is the enormous space between the front passengers, which could easily accommodate even the hugest of purses or backpacks. Is it roomy? Yes, the payoff for that dorky tall design is lots of headroom front and back. For the driver and passenger, it's a cinch to get comfortable, though power seats are not offered on any version of the Bolt. And even though I'm not super tall, I do wish you could lower the seats a little bit more. It feels like I'm sitting very high in the car, even at the lowest setting. In back, too, there's an impressive amount of space that could easily accommodate four adults. And with no hump in the floor, you could even seat people in the center seat, too. How does the interior feel? I like the way that the inside of the Bolt EV looks, but when you touch it, the materials aren't anything particularly special. They're all very nice, but there's just a lot of hard plastics throughout here. You'll also notice that the steering wheel and a lot of the other secondary controls come from other Chevy products like the Cruze. But that doesn't really bother me too much because they're all nice pieces that work really well in this car. Is it well equipped? The Bolt is offered in LT and Premier trim levels, and overall there's a lot of good equipment available. Options include things like a Bose sound system, a Wi-Fi hotspot, active safety tech, heated rear seats, and so on. But you can't get some of the goodies you might get on comparably priced cars, things like power seats or a sunroof or other tech goodies like self-park or cooled seats. I don't see that as a real problem though on a car like this because it's meant to be an eco-warrior rather than a luxury conveyance. How's the infotainment system? This 10.2 inch screen is standard and it's very good. It uses different software than other Chevrolet cars, starting with this stylish reconfigurable home screen that has multiple widgets you can expand by tapping on them. All the built-in functions are responsive and easy to use, and there are several displays for checking out all sorts of stats about battery range, charging configuration, and energy usage. You also get two USB ports and an auxiliary port up front, two optional USB charge ports in back, and of course, support for both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Is it a good daily driver? Perhaps the first thing that you notice about using the Bolt is that it drives just like any other car in most respects. You don't need to learn anything specific to drive it just because it's an electric car. It's very, very quiet. Acceleration is very smooth because like most electric cars, there's no transmission. It's a single speed drive system. I really like driving the Bolt a lot, um, but I don't like using this electric shifter at all. It's in a couple of other General Motors cars and it's really a nuisance when you've got to shift between drive and reverse quickly when you're parking and so on. 
So driving range is perhaps one of the most critical metrics on electric cars. The Bolt is rated at 238 miles on a full charge, which is really, really far. You could go from New York to Boston on that range. We're seeing with the battery fully charged, it estimating about 180 miles of range. That's because it's cold and we've had the heated seats and the heater on. I want to mention also the regeneration paddle that's on the left side of the steering wheel. You can pull that and it activates the regenerative brakes to slow you down and charge up the battery. It seems like you wouldn't want to use that instead of just using the brake pedal when you first drive the car, but after a while you kind of get hooked on using it to just slow down in city traffic. The brakes themselves, like a lot of electric cars or hybrid cars, don't feel that great. They're very artificial and spongy, and especially the first few miles you drive the car, it's kind of hard to judge when it's going to transition from being the regenerative braking to the real brakes. Is it fun to drive? Actually, the Bolt is pretty good to drive. For starters, there's a lot of power. The electric motor's rated at 200 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque. Chevy says the zero to 60 run takes about six and a half seconds, which is really pretty good. That's about on par with a Ford Fiesta ST hot hatch. In terms of handling and steering and braking, well, as I just said, the brake feel is a little bit mushy and vague, and so is the steering feel, really. One benefit for handling in an electric car is that all the weight is down low where the battery pack is in the floor, so that helps with your center of gravity, but it certainly doesn't make the Bolt feel like a sports car necessarily. But I would say all things considered, considering that this car is meant to be all about eco-friendliness and saving the earth, it's really not that bad to drive at all. How's the fuel economy? The EPA-rated driving range for a fully charged Bolt is 238 miles, longer than any other electric car not made by Tesla. Charging the Bolt will take up to 9 hours if you use a 240 volt charger, which is the most common type that you'll find in parking lots or in home charging setups. Using the included household 120 volt outlet adapter to charge the car will take, no joke, more than 2 days, so that's for emergencies only. The Bolt can also be optioned with a level 3 fast charge option. Using that, you can add 90 miles of driving range in just 30 minutes. How much is it? The Bolt LT starts at $38,000, while this premier model starts at $42,000. The car is eligible for a $7,500 federal tax credit, and some states offer additional credits, so your effective purchase price could be just $30,000 or even less. Now, those prices aren't cheap, but the Bolt is far, far cheaper than any other electric car with this much driving range. What are the negatives? The biggest thing working against the Bolt is the fact that it doesn't have a Tesla badge on the hood. Tesla has made electric cars sexy, and buyers really lust after the Model S and Model X, even if they're not really that interested in EVs. The Bolt, well, it's a great car, but it isn't sexy in the same way those are. And let's not forget, Tesla is bringing out its own Bolt rival later this year. The Model 3 is going to be roughly the same price and have roughly the same driving range as the Bolt, and that could pose serious competition for this Chevy. Who should buy it? If you're ready to switch to electric motoring right now, the Bolt EV is the car to get. It's reasonably affordable, and it's got a long enough driving range that you could use it as your everyday car. Now, the best part of all is that it's actually on sale now. That Tesla Model 3 we talked about before, no one knows for certain when it's going to go into production or reach dealerships. But today, the Bolt EV is the best choice for most people looking for an EV. If you liked this why buy be sure to click the like button. And if you've got any questions about this or any other cars we've reviewed, leave a comment below and we'll try and get back to you. You should also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get every why buy and loads of other great video content. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and at motorone.com.